Hello and welcome to the next video of my ADE Discord Hall of Fame series where we go over the players my Discord and myself have chosen to be in the LOL Esports Hall of Fame. There are some real uh, regulations and rules as to when a player can be eligible for the Hall of Fame, namely being retired for two years. Um, currently, the ninth class is being voted on right now. If you watch this from a year from now, uh, 13th class will be voted on and the 14th class will be coming up in a month um, just trying to catch up on the seasons and then do one a year um, sneaky is a part of the second class um, that does not mean he's the second best AD carry of all time or one of the 12 best players of all time it just means he's uh, voted on as the one of the 12 best players that I had on the ballot um, between the first two uh, classes so sneaky cloud nine no sneaky no worlds that is the definition of his career. Every year he ended in a uh, world's appearance. We cannot take that away from him. He is, um, you know, worlds, I mean, and sneaky are synonymous, right? You, you can't think of worlds without thinking of sneaky. You can't think of sneaky without thinking of worlds. Over his career from 2013 to 2019, he put up 196.82 Hall of Fame points that are determined by me. Uh, partially stats, partially accolades from myself as well as real accolades. And just simply results. Um, most played champions, Lucian, Ash, and Ezreal. His Lucian, um, fifth most all-time in games played. Ash, seventh. Ezreal, 21st. These three champions accounted for 31% of his games. So three out of every 10 games. Um, one of these champions were picked. In terms of KDA, his strongest champion was Sivir. 6.27, which ranks 6th all time. His Ezreal was 2nd, uh, best KDA for himself, 6.13, which ranks 11th. And then 3rd, Tristana, 5.36, ranks 10th all time. Win rate wise, his strongest champion is Ash. 75% win rate, 3rd all time. So, his second most played, seventh most all time in his third strongest win rate. So his Ash, one of the best ever. Um, his Kesa, second strongest champion win rate rise, 71%, which ranks fourth. And third, his Caitlyn, 70% win rate also ranks fourth. So um, just, he had a wide array of champions when it came to uh, his best in stats, right? Three different champions from... KDA to win rate. Uh, we have Lucian up there as his most played, but not his strongest in KDA or win rate, probably because he played it so much. So um, everything is Cloud9 related for Sneaky except one part of this board. So at 19 years old, he would begin his career in 2013 promos of summer with Quantum Team something. He used to go by Sneaky Castro. I think that name got uh, booted and he became Sneaky. Uh, five games played, dominated that series. 19.33 um, KDA, 7.22 CS per minute. That would get him a, a job with Cloud9. So Cloud9, I think, bought that roster. And then in 2013, Summer just dominated. In 28 games, he had a 6.96 KDA, which was first in the region at the roll. 7.46 CS per minute, 67.7 KP, 22.9 gold share. He would then, in the playoffs, win. So he won the split, would win in playoffs to be able to go to Worlds. In five games, in the playoffs, stepped his game up. Had a 7-3-6 KDA. And you're going to realize, sneaky throughout his career, very KDA-oriented. Remember Prey, who I went over yesterday, um, and is also on the playlist. Very KDA-oriented. 7-0-9 CS per minute, 62-4 KP, 22-1 gold share. At Worlds, he'd play in three games. Um, 2.9 KDA, 6.8 CS per minute, 88.4 KP, so way more involved. But obviously the team struggled in only playing three games. I mean, but he went. And that's the thing. Every year, Sneaky went to Worlds. 22.95 Hall of Fame points that year. In 2014 spring, he would win the split once again at 20 years old. In 28 games, led the region in KDA with 7.7 in his role. 88 CS per minute, 68.4 KP, had the most DPM at 629, 30.5 damage share, also ranked first, and 22.8 gold share. You're going to realize high KDA, sometimes high damage, but never really high resources. There's only like maybe one year where we can say he had a lot of resources, but it was relative to the meta. It wasn't, you know, out of whack. More often than not, it was actually lower than um, you'd expect for a player of sneaky stature. 
In five games, they would win spring. Now, this is before MSI was a thing. So, five games played, crushed it. 17.3 KDA, 8.6 CS per minute, 77.2 KP, 6.48 damage per minute, 30.4 damage share, 22.5 gold share. Returned in summer, it would win that split regular season-wise. So, that's three straight regular season wins. 5.6 KDA was third. His uh, CS would drop to 8.2. 71 KP, still led in DPM at 633. 34-4 damage share was second, 22.9 gold share. In the playoffs, he would play in eight games, do well enough to be able to earn a world slot. Had an 8-1 KDA, 8-1 CS per minute, 61-6 KP, so less involved, didn't die. 657 DPM, 37.4% of the team's damage. Big time carry at this point in his career. 23 gold share at worlds he would do better than the year before in 11 games had a 4 kda 7 7 cs per minute still a drop off internationally 68 2 kp 534 damage per minute 29.2 damage share 23.5 gold share he'd have just under 30 hall of fame points that year 2015 same story like uh 21 years old in 19 games had the second best kda in the lcs at 80 carry was 7.2 his cs was third nine per minute 25.9 kp was second and 24.7 gold share this year in spring high resources nearly 25 percent in the playoffs in nine games had a 3.8 kda 8.9 cs per minute and 82.8 kp so way more involved too when you look at 2015 Verse 2014, we're looking at low 70s in 2014, but high 70s in 2015 for the bulk of the games. Uh, 25-1 gold share. 2015 summer, 19 games played, 3-9 CS per minute, 8.5, sorry, 3-9 CS per minute, Jesus Christ, KDA, 8-5 CS per minute. So not quite as strong as spring. 78-3 KP, 5-10 damage per minute, 24-1 damage share. In the 2015 summer playoffs, they would win. Um, and this became a thing where they would just find a way to go to Worlds at all costs. They may not have had a great regular season, but C9 were able to get to Worlds. In 14 games, 3-7 KDA, 7-8 CS per minute, 66-2 KP. These numbers do not wow you. Actually, they're quite a drop-off. 595 damage per minute, 23% gold share, but they found a way. At Worlds, I mean sneaky didn't do great um seven games played 2.8 cs per minute seven jesus i did again 2.8 kda 7.9 cs per minute 62 1 kp so all of a sudden we go from the bulk of our games around 78 to 82 percent to at worlds 62 percent but yet not getting a lot of farm only 393 damage per minute which is awful 24 damage share 22 8 gold share so i would say he disappeared but 21 and a half Hall of Fame points. 2016 spring, 18 games played, 4 1 CS per minute, 8. 4 1 KDA, 8 3 CS per minute. 69 KP, 597 damage per minute, 28 damage share, 22 3 gold share. In the playoffs, they'd play four games, 3 2 KDA, 8 1 CS per minute, 67 4 KP. 495 damage per minute, 26.6 damage share, 22.7 gold share. In summer, he would play 44 games, have a 6.3 KDA, which was first in the region. 8.4 CS per minute, 70.1 KP, also first. But you notice these resources are not very high. We look at 80 carries, we're seeing 9s and 10s and things like that. But for Sneaky, 8, not a high resource. Weak, he was a weak side 80, 80 carry. Um, 516 damage per minute, 276 damage share was still first in the region relative to their team. 225 gold share in the playoffs in 13 games. They would not be able to get over the hump to secure worlds in the playoffs normally, but in 13 games, Sneaky had a 6.5 KDA, 8.3 CS per minute, 73.3 KP, 613 damage per minute, 25.7 damage share, 22.2 gold share. So he tried, couldn't get it done. However, everything would be okay because in the regionals, they won. In seven games, he had an eight KDA. So simply, I mean, he's already not dying a lot, but really, he's not dying a lot. 
8.1 CS per minute, 63 1 KP, 586 damage per minute, only 23.8 damage share, so mid is carrying, top is carrying, 22 1 gold share. So at Worlds in 2016, Sneaky gets a little more resources than he had in the past, but also dies a lot more. So under 2 KDA, but 8.5 CS per minute. 61 AKP, so the second year in a row at Worlds where he kind of isn't nearly as um, impactful um, as involved as he was during the LCS split. 612 damage per minute, 27.8 damage share, 21.8 gold share. So only 21.8% of the team's gold at World. After, I mean... A year where he was under 23%. And we think of primary carries, we think of 24, 25, even to 26% when you look at the elite uh, resource hoarders. Um, Sneaky was just not that way. He was weak side and he found a way. And in some cases, he led the region in damage per minute or would lead the team in damage share despite the gold not being there. And that's huge because players that can do that, that find ways to make things happen, find ways to be impactful without a lot of resources, are the best type of players in my opinion so that year he'd have 24 and a half hall of fame points um four for four when it comes to worlds now on to the second half of his career okay so 2017 23 years old sneaky once again doing well 44 games would be second in kda at 4.2 but still low resource 8.3 cs per minute 62.8 kp 546 damage per minute was third in the region 26.2 percent of the share and once again, 21.6% of the gold share. Playoffs, eight games, uh, 3.5 KDA, 8.5 CS per minute, 63.8 KP, 4.58 damage per minute, 23.8 damage share. So really fell off there, was not nearly as impactful. You're looking at third tier carry in terms of share and 22 gold share. In summer, in 45 games, third in KDA with a five. 8.8 eight CS per minute, 69.9 KP, third. 521 damage per minute, 26% damage share, 22.6 gold share. Four games in the playoffs, they would bow out. So C9 do not do well in the playoffs. 3-5 KDA, 8-5 CS per minute, 72-5 KP for Sneaky. 567 damage per minute, 26 damage share, 22.5 gold share. Still putting up the same stats he's been putting up the entire time. Sneaky very consistent. Regionals, they win. So in four games, Sneaky steps it up from what he was doing all year or even the last two years in one series he had a 10-3 kda 9-8 cs per minute 68 kp 820 dpm which was 33.3 percent of the team's damage and 24.2 percent of the share so all of a sudden he's carrying at worlds in play-ins um i mean play-ins at worlds is uh you know, bullying when it comes to major regions. So in seven games, he had a 10-2 KDA, 9-4 CS per minute, 62-5 KP, 627 damage per minute, 30% of the team share, and 22.9% of the gold share. And actually, he'd do well in Worlds in general. It, it, it became a thing where Cloud9 did better because they got to play in play-ins and ramp up to go to Worlds, had a lot of scrim time and things like that. And they would have some success. One of the best, if not the best runs when it comes to LCS teams at Worlds specifically. Um, and internationally, I guess, one of the best runs because we had a couple, you know, uh, LCS had a couple good MSI runs. C9 had the best Worlds runs. So in 11 games, 3-8 KDA, 9-3 CS per minute, 72-1 KP was second at the tournament amongst 80 carries. 750 damage per minute, 33.7% of the share, and still 22.8% of the gold share. So, uh, Sneaky was not the reason why they struggled. 37 Hall of Fame points. In 2018 spring, in 20 games, Sneaky would have a 4-2 KDA and 10-2 CS per minute. So this continues. What happened in 2017 regionals carried throughout 2018 um, for the most part when it came to becoming just more important, as more impactful when it came to, to resource-heavy play um, in, in the case of Sneaky. So... Like I said, 10-2 CS per minute, 71-6 KP, 645 damage per minute was third. 30.8% of the damage share, 23.3% of the gold share. In three games in 2018 spring, it's not his fault that they lost. Um, 9-5 KDA, 10 CS per minute, 86.8% of the KP. Somehow had 807 DPM despite dropping out. 
44.6% of the damage share. That's why he dealt half the team's damage in the loss. And 25.5% of the gold. Um, 2018 summer was the ugly one for Cloud9. They would bench Sneaky. They would bench Jensen. They would get weird. Um, in 12 games, he'd have a 4-5 KDA, 9-9 CS per minute, 65-9 KP, 5-20 damage per minute, 25-4 damage share, and 22.8 gold share. So that resource heavy play, not quite as prevalent. He was third in gold share, though, at 22.8. In playoffs, in eight games, uh, Sneaky died quite a bit. Very unlike Sneaky. Uh, 2 4 KDA, still 9 7 CS per minute, 78 3 KP, 656 damage per minute, so a lot more damage than he put up in the 12 summer games. 31.9 gold share, uh, 31.9 damage share, sorry, and 23.5 gold share. They would win re regional finals, so. 12 games regular season, that 8 game set that I just talked about data wise was playoffs and now regional finals 3-0. 8-3 CS per minute, 9-1, geez, that would be relatively close. 8-3 KDA, 9-1 CS per minute, 63-9 KP, so all of a sudden went from 70s and 80s to 63. 754 DPM, it doesn't matter that he wasn't involved because 750 DPM is significant. 28.3% of the share, 23.5% of the gold share, they would go to play-ins. So, in nine games and play-ins, once again, Sneaky plays with his food. 6-1, KDA, 9-3 CS per minute, 68-5 KP, 592 damage per minute, which was almost 31% of the team's share, 24.2% of the gold share. At Worlds, they would go on a deep run. Uh, in 13 games, Sneaky had a 3.7 KDA, 9.4 CS per minute, 62.1 KP. Just 492 DPM though, which was 27% of the share, so secondary carry. And uh, 24, uh, sorry, 23.3% of the gold share. So Sneaky putting together his best two Worlds runs in 17 and 18. Uh, but we have to remember, these are his fifth and sixth times going to Worlds. Um, 41 Hall of Fame points. 2019 would be his last year at 25 years old. In 17 games, he had a 6.5 KDA, which was second in the region amongst 80 carries. 8.9 CS per minute, 66.7 KP. 6.78 DPM was first, 31.6% of the share, 23.5% of the gold share. In the playoffs, they would bow out in five games, as was Cloud9's way. Once MSI became a thing, Cloud9 struggled to get to the tournament. Um, 3 KDA, 8.8 CS per minute, 78, 2 KP, 538 damage per minute, 29.2% of the share, 23.7% of the gold share. So the gold similar. I mean, Sneaky just died more in these five games and dealt less damage. 2019 summer, very much like spring. In 17 games, Sneaky once again, second best 80 carry in the region, 5.6. 8.5 CS per minute, 61.5 KP. 548 damage per minute, 27.7 damage share, 23.1 gold share. In the playoffs, they wouldn't have to go to regionals or anything. In nine games, they did well enough to secure a world slot. 4 KDA, 9.5 CS per minute, 66.7 KP, 566 damage per minute, 28.6% of the damage share, and 25% of the gold share. That did not happen often in Sneaky's career. But in that data set, he did actually have one quarter of the team's damage. And over 9 CS per minute, I mean, he just wasn't the type of player. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, so, he ends his career at Worlds. I say this all the time. A lot of players, I think that is what they should do. You know, don't play too long. Um, and, and Sneaky may have had more juice in the tank. Um, but... He bowed out after Worlds. So, it wasn't a great Worlds for him, don't get me wrong, but still, ending your career at that event, I think, is is uh, the best you can do. So, in five games, a 1.8 KDA, 7.7 CS per minute, 69.8 KP, led in DPM. So, sample size obviously being small, um, but out of all the 80 carries at the event, he led in DPM, 6.15. 27.5% of the damage share was second in the tournament and 23.2 gold share. So he died a lot, didn't have a lot of resources, but did deal a lot of damage. No 80 carry dealing more. Um, and, you know, if there was a way to go out, you go out uh, with uh, guns a blazing, and it truly happened. 20.18 Hall of Fame points, very consistent career. 
Uh, I don't think anybody can do, can really say a bad thing about Sneaky. Um, so comment down below with your opinions. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And hope to see you again tomorrow.